We've been a leader in banking for more than 100 years. You'll find us here, at home, on your phone, and everywhere you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi. This is Newsbreak for Wednesday, August 16th. I'm Brad Locke. Thanks for joining us. Just a reminder that Newsbreak comes to you each weekday at 7 a.m. You can watch it on djournal.com, Facebook, YouTube, or the Daily Journal's mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. We're going to take a quick look at news, sports, and weather for Northeast Mississippi. Let's start with the weather forecast. For today, scattered thunderstorms are possible, a high of 91 degrees, low of 74, 50% chance of rain. The three-day outlook, Thursday, partly cloudy with a high of 92, low of 75, 20% chance of rain. Thunderstorms possible again on Friday with a high of 91, low of 72, the chance of rain is 50%. And thunderstorms possible on Saturday with a high of 90, low of 72, chance of rain is 40%. Let's take a look now at some of the top stories from the Daily Journal and djournal.com on this Wednesday. While again condemning the violence by white supremacists in Charlottesville, Virginia, Governor Phil Bryant said it does not change his mind about the Mississippi state flag. Bryant said Tuesday he still wants to see the controversial Mississippi flag placed on the election ballot to be rejected or reaffirmed by Mississippians. The Confederate battle flag could be spotted during the violent protest in Virginia this past weekend, along with the Nazi swastika, and there was at least one instance of a banner resembling the Mississippi state flag being waved. Bryant called it unfortunate that white supremacists would use the state flag. He also criticized those who he said would use the incident to try and force a change in the flag. Mississippi voters overwhelmingly rejected replacing the state flag with a new design in 2001. Sisters Rachel and Sarah Smith drove 200 miles Tuesday morning to pick up their brother's dog. Kava, still limping from her experiences following the death of her owner, Samuel Smith, walked straight into the loving arms of the two women. Samuel Smith of, Ar of Arkansas was found dead in Chihuahua Lake in July, a victim of homicide, according to authorities. Joshua Lee Fletcher of Natchitoches, Louisiana, is suspected in the killing. Over the past few weeks, Smith's family had been posting Kava's picture all over social media and offered a $2,000 reward. The dog was found injured on the side of the interstate between Grenada and Winona on July 27th. Amelia Brown picked up the three-year-old Border Collie Shepherd mix and dropped her off at a Winona veterinarian along with money to cover the medical bills. Someone at the vet's office saw a friend's Facebook post and recognized the dog. Brown asked that the reward money go to a local animal rescue shelter. Many Mississippians may be closer than they realize to earning a higher education degree, and a new website was unveiled Tuesday to help them find out. The website is part of the Complete to Compete initiative designed to help individual Mississippians finish their degrees. It also aims to help the state move closer to the national average of citizens with higher education degrees. Residents can now go to msc2c.org, that's msc, the numeral 2, c.org. The free website will tell them how close they are to obtaining a degree and the options available to help them get there. According to officials, many residents are close to finishing their degrees. More than 2,400 residents can earn a bachelor's degree with no additional work, and more than 28,000 Mississippians can earn a two-year degree with no extra work. Meanwhile, more than 100,000 residents have started their coursework and can earn a degree with more work. And in sports, the Jason Pellerin experiment might soon be expanded. The third-year sophomore was a quarterback for Ole Miss last year, but when Shea Patterson emerged at the, as the starter, Pellerin was moved to tight end. He has shown himself to be a skilled pass catcher playing on the outside, and there could be more to his role after starting tight end Dawson Knox suffered a foot injury in Saturday's scrimmage. With Knox out, Pellerin has been spending time at practice blocking defensive linemen. New offensive coordinator Phil Longo has described Pellerin's role as more of an H-back. Pellerin occasionally entered games last season in short yardage situations and would usually run the ball. He rushed for 90 yards and three touchdowns in nine games. That's all for Newsbreak on this Wednesday. Before I go, I'd like to remind you to check out a couple of the podcasts we produce here at the Daily Journal, The Memo, all things Northeast Mississippi, news and entertainment, with myself and W. Derek Russell. New episodes every Wednesday and Friday. Find it in iTunes, any of your podcast apps, or at memo.djournal.com. Also, check out Prep Rally, a high school sports podcast with myself and Dalton Middleton. New episodes every Wednesday. You can find that in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at preprally.djournal.com. For more on the stories I talked about today, pick up a copy of your daily journal or visit djournal.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at djournalnow. 
give our Facebook page a like as well. That's all for News Break on this Wednesday. I'm Brad Locke. We'll see you next time.